Here we go. And uh, Margaret. Movies. I'm Big Mike. I'm Justin Ferdy Ferguson. And we are here once again. Um, yeah. So, since about a week ago, the new Beauty and the Beast trailer came out, which, holy shit, that thing looks amazing, we thought of, you know, performances that moved us. Because, like, me personally, like, um, when we're talking about performances that moved us, just to talk about just the trailer that I watched from Beauty and the Beast, the new one, you know, when I was watching it, I was like, oh, like, this is great, but I found myself even tearing up because it almost seems like, like I was telling you, it seems like a, it's like they took our, your childhood and then brought it to life. You know, it's like, it's almost like, okay, here you go, and now it's real. <laughs> you know, it's like, and now those, they feel real, I mean, the performances are real, and, and it, I mean, it looks amazing. Yeah. Like we were talking about the casting and how we, we, we actually talked about on a previous podcast that... The casting sounds amazing. The casting is amazing. Like, and it is. And we, we were talking about, like, you line up all the pictures of most of the characters, and it's pretty spot on. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that got me was the the two male leads, the guys playing Gaston and the Beast. When you hear them speak in the trailer, it is almost, honestly sounds like just a dub from, exactly. from, the, from the animated movie. Yeah, when he goes like, I see we kill the beast, it's like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, no, it, it looks really good. Like I showed uh, Chloe too, my uh, daughter there. She, I don't know, have you shown your kids the No, no not yet. So they're probably not even, they, they're like, we gotta watch it now. But yeah. um, anyway, no, when I showed Chloe, like, because she loves, it was her, ironically, she, I, I woke up in the morning, she was watching Beauty and the Beast. And I'm like, I have something to show you. So I showed her, and she's watching, and she goes, it's the beast. Like, so it just clicked that this is real, right? And yeah, like, I wasn't, I didn't know what to fully expect from the beast, like, his, his uh, physical appearance. Yeah. But frick, the, he looks good, man. He does look good. I mean, I noticed they went for more of a human-y face. Yes, they Because yeah. when you look at him in the animated film, he, the, I even watched the behind the scene when they drew him, his head is based on a buffalo. That's right, yeah. His head is based on a buffalo, and it's his close face, to the real version. His though. face looks like a buffalo, it's just like, mm -hmm. fang sticking out of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I wonder if they're going to do, like, <laughs> like uh, that's the next thing. What are they going to leave out? What are they going to mm -hmm. put in? Um, I, I don't think there's going to be any singing numbers. I'm a little disappointed with that, though. I th uh, you know, part of me, I don't know. I think they might go with this one. Mm -hmm. They might put a couple in there, I think, because... Maybe be our guest? Yeah, they. I'm sure they'll put that one in, if uh, I think. Um, yeah, I don't know what they're going to do because, to be honest, I think they should do the musical numbers because, but they don't show that in trailers now. Did you notice that? Like, for example, this is not a Disney movie, but Sweeney Todd, like when it was released, the trailer was released for Sweeney Todd. Yeah. There was no singing in the trailer at all. No. Because people apparently are afraid to go to musicals, which I don't know why. I don't know why. Yeah. So, but anyway, musicals are great. I mean, you got like Rock or Picture Show, Little Shop of Horrors, Horrors. uh, Grease. Grease. Um, yeah, I mean, to name a few. Uh, people love musicals. And I don't understand what people are scared of. I mean, it doesn't even matter. It's a Disney movie. You should almost have to expect there to be a song in it. But, I mean, I'm hoping they kind of do the full song thing, but I guess we'll see. Either way, I'll be interested. I mean, they try. it seems like they try to squeeze the music in here and there. Yeah. The only movie so far I've seen where they've actually had a song fully, mm -hmm. songs fully in it is The Jungle Book. Right, yeah. And that's, you know, since Jungle Book was super successful, they might do that with Beauty and the Beast. So, also interesting, I'm sure you know this, but uh, John Favreau, they got to direct his new feature, which right. is The Lion King. The Lion King. Ooh. The yeah. Lion King. So, and it's going to be like how Jungle Book was, but... Are yeah. they going to go full Hamlet this time, or are they going to... I don't know. Find out. Is, it, is there some things they didn't put in the like an original Lion King story, or did they? Um, because I don't know. Like, because I know it's it's based off Hamlet, but mm -hmm. did they actually do like a like a full novel about the Lion King? I'm kind of uh, know. you know uneducated about that, but 
to look that up. I'll just see if there's a Lion King novel or something. But no, like, it, I mean, John Favreau, he did a fantastic job with the Jungle Book. I'm sure he'll do a fantastic job. Well, I'm sure he'll bring this. the same people he did with the, the Jungle Book, like his animators and people like that. I'm sure he'll bring the same people on board. To be that. honest, I wouldn't even give a shit. Just recast Edris Elba as Scar. I'm fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> like, just put him in everything. You know, like, seriously. Like, but, you know, I was reading somewhere that someone said that they do not buy... They don't like Sher Khan's voice because he sounds like a like a badass London dude. But I mean I found that voice like super intimidating. Like yeah. I don't know what this person's talking about. Yeah, I don't know either. Because I mean you look at when we talked about this in our previous podcast, he was like in the old one, he was sort of like this foppish mm-hmm. sort of yeah, British. Guy. Exactly. Yeah. And the in the animated one. But with this, he still had the British accent, but it was more is more like I hate using this term because he's black, but more street. You know? <laughs> I get you. Yeah, it's more um, like dark. <laughs> I, we're not racist. I swear to God. I just, <laughs> I'm just trying to find. <laughs> it's more uh, intense, deeper in tone. No, nope, that doesn't work either. Um, yeah, it's intense. Yeah. We'll go with intense. Yeah. Not that black people are intense. We're just saying. It's just. It's, 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 it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you say. It's self racist. All, all we're saying is it was good. We liked it. We enjoyed it. We both enjoyed that. But anyway, um, let's see if we can quickly find out what the Lion King and maybe we should kind of get back on track here. Uh, it just sounds like... Because I know they do the musical now, mm-hmm. which I would love to see. Um, I wonder what they're going to do when they get to Aladdin. Yeah. Are you they see, actually going to... Here's my big thing. It's like, I understand, like, we've been talking, like, whitewashing a lot of roles lately. Like, we went and saw... Doctor Strange. Yes. And the ancient one. Yes, she's it's supposed to be like a an, an, a, an Asian person. Yeah, an old like is it a I'm not sure if it's a woman or a man. Yeah, I can't remember. But, but it, it, they're supposed to be Asian. Yeah. And they picked Tilda Swinton, who is whiter than a jar of mayonnaise. <laughs> yes, she's very white. Um I thought Tilda Swinton did fine. Mm-hmm. But I am I'm leaning more towards there are so many diverse actors out there. Mm. Maybe give an Asian actor a chance. Yeah, like I think what they're go- like that's another thing. Like another trailer that was dropped just shortly before that one was the Ghost in the Shell trailer. Yeah, that's whitewashed that- if I've ever seen it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That, I mean, Scarlett Johansson's a fine actress, but I'm, there are literally billions of Japanese people in the world. Yeah, really. Right. How many Japanese actors are there in Japan? Like, yeah, they have a whole, whole movie world. industry. You can't hire one to play yeah. this part? Well, that's what we were, like, I was on a chat thread talking about that, and then Dragon Ball. Yeah, that was an world. abomination. Not that I've seen it, but I've, I've heard it, and plus I know you know, a lot of my friends are Dragon Ball Z fans, you're yeah. one of them, aren't you? So anyway, yeah, like, so, that yeah. movie was, like, super whitewashing. But here's the thing, why can't you just, like, same thing with uh, Pokemon. Okay, if you're going to do a Pokemon movie, first of all, they are doing a Pokemon movie. Yeah. But it's going to be Detective Pikachu. Yeah, it sounds freaking stupid. But anyway, I don't know why they just don't go with a flat-out Pokemon movie, but anyway, why don't you just, like, Americanize the budget? Yeah. Send it to Japan or whatever. Let them make their freaking movie. Because uh, they do great movies. They're, they're fantastic. They, they're, their industry they're anime, just, I mean, yeah. is fantastic. Now, getting back to the point we were talking about with the Disney remakes. Yeah. Aladdin. Yes. The entire cast of Aladdin, of the characters, are all Arabic. Well, that's nice. That's good. Yeah. I also heard Mul- just like, quickly I say like Mulan is the... supposed to be like that, too. They're going to make her an actual Asian cast, Asian lead. So yeah. that's nice. But anyway, with Aladdin, I hope they do that. Yes, yeah, they so do. They haven't cast it yet. Oh, okay. okay. But, like, enough. Aladdin, Jasmine, Jafar, the Sultan, the Genie. I hope so. They, I think, you know, there's another country that has, like, India. Huge. It has its own movie industry. Oh, yeah. They have no shortage of actors to pick from. You know who wouldn't be bad as uh, Aladdin? Who? Um, what do you call? Uh, I can't remember his name right now, but Raj from uh, Big Bang Theory. Yeah, he'd be alright. He'd be. He has right. that comedy side of it. He's awkward, but he can act. That. I mean, and he's not an ugly guy. No. Like, it's like Aladdin always has that sort of slick, but a little klutzy charm yeah, yeah, yeah. to it. Exactly. What nationality is? Um... Oh man, why am I drawing a blank all of a sudden? Uh, Fez. In that 70s show. What nationality is he? I don't know. Because 
you know, he would make it. Well, I mean, he's mind you, he's a little probably older than what they're looking for. Yeah. Uh, not that he's old by any stretch of the yeah. imagination, but a uh, Wilmer Valderrama. Thank Wilmer you. Valderrama. Got him drawing the block to, blank today. Yeah. But anyway, I mean, he, I mean, he's good looking dude. That's one thing. Again, way off kilter. I don't get why nobody liked it. Like nobody found him good looking in that seventy show. He's a freaking good looking dude who could dance. Well, in real life, like come he on. Had, in real life, he dated every starlet. <laughs> Yeah, I know, yeah. Like, he was with uh, Lizzie Lohan. And, or, and, and wasn't he also with Hilary Duff? And, yeah, he freaking made his way all over the place. He fezzed his way in there. But, um, yeah, it's... Uh, uh, oh, fuck. <laughs> Will... Anyway, so... No, I hear what you mean. They gotta... Stick to the roots. Like, why can't they just... Like, with the Japanese um, doing, like, Ghost in the Shell, uh, Pokemon, Dragon Ball Z... Um, you know, like what they're doing with Mulan. Mm -hmm. So why can't they do that? Yeah, I don't know what really nationality he is. He's born in Miami, Florida, so he's not really... He might be Hispanic. He might be Hispanic, so... And even then, I mean, they, they did that in Star Trek. Ricardo Montalban played an, an Arab prince. He is as Mexicano as it gets. He is like Antonio Banderas in the 70s. Well, another sort of, uh, I wouldn't say whitewashing, but like uh, Ben Kingsley as the Mandarin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, like I mean, <laughs> shit. Even even though they went with an air like a Middle Eastern terrorist yeah. uh, Mandarin, that's fine. But like the guy who was the villain, like the 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 Iraqi villain in the first movie, yeah, yeah, yeah. a guy like that easily could have been the Mandarin. Oh, yeah, easily. Yeah, I don't know when they like. It's, there's no short. Sure, they want to go for like a big name, sort of. You know, to mm -hmm. sort like I'm the villain. The villain has to be a big name or whatever. No, you don't. This is how people get discovered. Maybe give someone else a chance. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. but anyway, no, I, I hear what you mean. But uh, it's just that's you, that's where TV comes in. That's where it's okay. Yeah, 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 exactly. So yeah, whatever. Like All I right. mean, to get try to get back on course now. So here's a sort of segue. Let's go with this. So I think Emma Watson although looks great. Mm -hmm. I think they should have went. I know she's maybe a little bit older than what they wanted. But I think what would have been perfect is Anne Hathaway. Because okay. side by side, they look fucking identical. And uh, Belle and uh, and her. And also she can sing. Yeah. And this is where this segues into performances that, that move us. Because one of my favorite performances, surprisingly from uh, any like anything that's affected me, the most is her performance in Les Miserables. Yes. Like you've you've seen I've that seen show. Okay, first of all, the show is fantastic. Yes, but she's the only person that I can recall in a musical where I literally like cried just from her singing. Like from like not just like oh her voice is so beautiful, but her performance, the of emotion, it, the in emotion her. in her voice, the story she's telling. Mm -hmm. It's like holy shit! Like you feel it. Like she's there with you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It. It's moving, and that's like that. That one affected me probably one of the most out of a lot of performances. Uh, I would say one thing: um, we're we're going to mostly do like things that make us well up and and yes. like emotionally yeah. sad. Right. But another one that kind of hit me, like made my chest sink. It was kind of like took all the air mm -hmm. out of like it hit you emotionally. Was in the first Andy Circus Planet of the Apes movie where he right. says no. Yeah, we've talked about this yes. before. That's like yeah, but he goes no. Yeah. Like, oh my god. Like, it just hits you it in hits the it. chest. And yeah. it's such a simple lie, right? Yeah. But, I, and you know he's, it's a fake CG8, but holy shit. You know, like, just from that performance alone, yeah. it's amazing, you know? Like, and the, we're going on performances that make you yeah. well up, uh, like, mm -hmm. have any kind of emotional reaction. Yeah, really, yeah. Um, trying to think of ones that really make me, and uh, we go to TV. Mm-hmm. There are two actors on MASH. Okay. Whenever they get sad and start crying, yeah. I have a hard time not getting choked yeah. up because of the way they cry and the emotion they put into those scenes. There's another actor that does that for me and my mom too, and that's Michael Landon from House of the Prairie. That, when he fucking cries, <laughs> that dude is like the manliest of dudes. Yeah. It's like, it's just like he, when he cries, you're like, holy shit, like life is real. <laughs> you know, like he's crazily. Like, he's a great actor, that dude. He, he is. Um, um, oh, what's his name? Um, Harry Morgan. Harry Morgan. Harry Morgan, who's an old Western guy. Right. Who be played Colonel Potter in the last few seasons of MASH. Right. 
He's sort of this old country doctor kind mm -hmm. of guy. And he feels like your grandfather. Okay. That's what he feels like. Oh, okay. And he's usually pretty stern. He's got a little bit of a sense of humor. Mm -hmm. When he yells at people, it's funny. Yeah. He kind of has that stern grandpa yelling at you kind of funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there are moments where he's sad, like when he something hits him emotionally and he starts to well up and cry and the way his lip shakes and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It honestly breaks my heart when I hear that man cry. Yeah, well, uh, like another um, sort of example of a stern kind of like actor we were just talking about, uh, Kurtwood Smith, who plays Red, the father on that 70s show. He's a hard ass, yeah. make, cracks jokes at his side or whatever. But it's. He's one of the best TV dads. I, I think this is probably going to get into a TV dad sort of thing for me. Yeah. But like he, when he like has his moments where like there's an episode where his his mom dies. Yeah. And uh, you know throughout the whole episode he was kind of not he was always trying to avoid his mom or whatever and he's kind of like being as hard ass as he can. But then there's a moment when he says something like that his mom did for him, mm -hmm. and then he kind of like stops and not fully wells up, but. The emotion in him, you know what I mean? Like, and like you say with uh, uh, with Harry there, it's yeah. yeah. And, and the other one from Mash is the the female lead, Loretta Swift, right. who plays Major Houlihan. She is she goes through a lot of transformations in the show. She starts out really ditzy and dumb, mm -hmm. and she gets she goes through a couple transformations. She goes from that to stern, like stern and commanding, right. and then to sort of an emotional, vulnerable woman towards the end. Right. Okay. And there are transformations like that. Yeah, she yes. Anyway, she there was a, like one season, one episode where she starts crying. Mm -hmm. Like this is the first time she really cried like an emotional cry. She has like right. sort of silly like Lucille Ball cries in some of the first <laughs> okay. few seasons. Of course, yeah. But it was supposed to be a sitcom. Yeah. Most of the time. But anyway. her one time she seriously cried. Um, she she's been hard ass for about two seasons, and. Very little emotional reaction comes out of her, and there's this little dog. And we're going back to dogs, okay? We're gonna avoid dogs as much as possible because we could do a whole podcast just on dogs. Okay. But sort of did, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. She, she's a she's an army nurse. She sees people dying all the time, mm -hmm. and this little puppy gets ran over by an ambulance. Oh shit! And she was taking care of this dog, and she, no one knew she was doing this except oh. for one of the other doctors. It was sort of a secret she was taking care of this dog. She didn't want anyone to know she had a soft side. Okay. Yeah. Of course. And the the main character, Hawkeye, he knew she was, like, he could see her doing it out of the corner of his eye. He knew, saw her doing it. And she she was, like, lashing out at everybody and getting mad at everybody. Yeah. And, he, and he's like, I know why. And she's like, why? And she she started to well up and start crying. She's like, I see people all the time. Why should I get upset about a little dog? Right. And she just started crying about this dog dying. And that, that scene, I... It hits me. Yeah, well, it hits any, any, like we say, like, when it comes to animals and stuff, I mean, we're pet lovers, yeah. so it affects us even more than it probably should, but it does. Mm -hmm. And I mean, yeah, like like I said, we could do a whole thing about pets, um, just pets and animals that have, you know, in, like, I mean, you could mention movies like Marley and Me and Milo and Otis. And, oh, that Marley and Me is a, another Marley movie. and Me, I haven't seen it yet. I, oh. I almost don't want to, <laughs> because I'm like, I saw the picture, and I'm like, yep, I'm going to cry in that movie, <laughs> or there's, what's that other movie, uh, that new one, the newer one, like, Must Love Dogs or something, whatever that newer dog movie is, like, I don't know what it is, but I'll have to look that up, I'll just type in dogs, see what happens, but, um, it's like a newer, a dog's purpose, a dog's purpose. <laughs> like, seriously, that title must be, it might as well just say, you're going to fucking cry, Immediately. That's all it's going to do, right? Yeah. Like, it just sounds like that. But, anyway, trying to get not too far, not to, to the pet side as much. Um, I'll go back to TV again. I think, there, there's so, I'm going to have to say TV dads hit it for me. I don't know yeah. why. It's just, but just the performance. Like, first of all, John, um, I can't remember his last name right now. But anyway, the dad from uh, Smallville. Oh, John Schneider. John Schneider, thank you. So John Schneider is, okay, spoiler alert if you haven't seen the show, in like the 100th episode of Smallville, he dies. Well, and, and almost every iteration, at some yeah. point, uh, well, Paul Kent dies. He, Paul, gets the, yeah. he gets the shit end of the stick. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, like, when that happens, like, 
you felt like he was li really, like you were watching a person really have a heart attack, like, and the way he looked in his son's eyes, like, knowing that he, he's gone, right? Like, yeah. that was one of the, my favorite performances from TV whatsoever. And another TV that I'll quickly sum up really quick is, um, uh, I can't remember, God, like I say, I'm really bad right now, um, with, uh, John Wesley Shipp, that's the name, from uh, Flash. He played Flash. Yeah. He also played TV Dad on Dawson's Creek. Yeah. Um, and again, I don't know what's with these people. He dies. Like, why do they? Do, why does everybody do this? Why do they kill off the TV Dad so quick? I don't but know. But anyway, his performance in The Flash and Dawson's Creek combined is like super moving performances. I always do that. But I will go back to... I'll do something that um, is not just sadness. I'll do anger. Yeah. Something that makes you super angry. Like for me, there's, there's, again, I'll just sum it up quick, is The Mist. Have yeah. you ever seen The Mist? Yes. That movie made me so freaking angry, <laughs> the ending, and also your stomach does sink, so there is a bit of a, a sadness there, but yeah. it's more of like, why did you do that? To, like, I mean, I mean, it's a fairly new movie, but at the same time, spoiler alert, like his, The Mist has come, they can't move, they're stuck. So they're like, there's only one way out. So he shoots his two, f is it friends in the back? Something, uh, something like, that. like that. Anyway, and then he says, okay, I'll shoot. He's going to shoot his son, right? So he shoots his son and he freaks out. Like, he, emotionally, that just was heartbreaking. Yeah. And then he goes to put the gun on himself. Yeah. And there's no bullets left. So he's like, screw it, I'm going to go out into the mist and just... Let whatever get me. Exactly. And then the mist goes away. And then everything is fine. So he just killed his son for no reason. And that is just, that made me... Freaking angry, like it's one of those. Oh, it's just one of those performances that, yeah. and moments in the movies that just make you so angry. I, mean, yeah. I don't know. Um, for me, going back to animals, anytime an animal gets John Wick, John Wick, Wick that pissed me off. Dog, <laughs> who fucking kills a puppy? Yeah, that anyway. pissed me off. Um, another movie I know is a favorite of yours. One of your favorite scenes in it, uh, Mr. Schindler with his watch. Oh man, that that's I. I can't even get through, like, even when I know what's going to happen, I'm like, I'm not going to freaking cry this time. Nope, it's already happening. Like, that scene alone, like, sure, it may not have happened. Mm -hmm. Whatever. It doesn't matter. That fucking scene is heartbreaking. But anyway, yeah. yeah. And, ang and makes you angry in a different way. But anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Schindler's List, man. Mm -hmm. It's a whole movie. movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean. Uh, <coughs> I have a question. Yeah. How the hell does Ray Fiennes play such an amazing oh, asshole and still I want to go watch him all the time? I know, man. <laughs> he plays a, such an amazing asshole. It's like... To it, quote, to quote Don Hall Gleason and, no, uh, the dad of whatever, him, the, an older actor in... Jackie Gleason? No, um, he played, um, in, uh, in Bruges. In Bruges? Um... Brendan Gleeson? Yeah, Brendan Gleeson. Okay. He said he turned to Ray Fiennes and he's like, "You're a cunt. <laughs> You've always been a cunt, and you will continue. You've been a cunt. You're always going to be a cunt. And the only thing that and that'll never change. The only thing that might change is you might have some more cunt kids." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. No, he's um, oh man, like everything that guy's in uh, Ray Fiennes, he's um, like, yeah, like why do you why do we want to watch him all the time? He's just He's like the one of the best bad guys like ever, like, and he's such a fucking dick <laughs> on screen. On screen, yes. Yeah. So, I hear he's like a go figure. He's, he's probably the sweetest the guy in the world. It was, uh, yeah. There was an actual. So I'll, I'll end this really quick on a quick story that apparently um, uh, he was in the same building as oh um, as Alan Rickman. Him and Alan Rickman. Lived in the same building. Yeah. Or no? What was? No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't him. It was someone. Maybe it was that. Oh, I can't remember now. It's gonna bug me. But anyway, it was him, and I'm pretty sure it was Alan Rickman. They lived in the kind of the same apartment building. Yeah. And it was like if anybody found out that Voldemort and Snape <laughs> lived in the same building, they'd probably burn that fucking house stuff. Like, it was just... And yeah, apparently he's just like the sweetest frickin' dude, man. Oh, just like Alan Rickman, dude. He yeah. so many bad guys. And, and, and you know what it probably is? Mm. Is there's such real nice guys in life. It's so much fun to just play something oh, so bet. opposite of who, you'd who you really are. Shit, I didn't know this. What? 
he's playing Alfred in the Lego Batman movie. That's great, man. So, hey, he doesn't play dicks. Well, Alfred is kind of a dick sometimes. To Batman. I hope he's a dick to Batman. Yeah. That, that is, is the because... best Alfred when Alfred just, like, what's his name did it? Nothing. <laughs> uh, Batman v Superman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what's his name? Um, Jeremy Irons. Jeremy Irons. I thought he was a great Alfred. Oh, just, he's perfect. I love him. Just, just giving Batman the shit all the time. He's like, yeah. he's like, even you got too old to die young. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not for a lack of trying. Yeah, really. <laughs> oh, he's just like, uh, he's all, first of all, that's a great, great casting. I, and besides, like, Alfred in the comics is, uh, he is kind of a badass. Like, I mean, he guards the Batcave with a shotgun. I mean, <laughs> and I mean, I, even in the TV show Gotham, I'm not a huge fan of Gotham, but that Alfred in there can kick ass. Like, he is probably, like, he might as well just be Batman. <laughs> like, that's, you know, that's another story altogether. But, I guess what we can sum up with uh, this this edition here is uh, there's lots of performances that move us. Tell us yours. We'd like to hear others. Um, obviously, some um, most packed, like, a, more of a sad punch more than yeah. others. But uh, they're all, I mean, that's what we go to the movies for. We go to escape. And uh, just hopefully you're not trying to, you know, escape from sadness, then you go see uh, A Dog's Purpose. <laughs> or Schindler's List. Or Schindler's List. Yeah, it's like, I need to laugh. laugh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this looks funny, it's my list, should be good. No, no, it's not, no. Yeah. Oh. It's not a good idea. No. <laughs> Alright, anyway. Until next time. I'm um, Mike. I'm Justin Freddy Ferguson. And uh, grab your popcorns, folks, because... Uh, and your tissues. And your tissues. <laughs> Because we're going to cry when we see a dog's purpose. <laughs> Guaranteed. <laughs> That's the purpose of the dog's purpose. Make the dog cry. cry.